Hey now, this is Metamicro, and I've got a video for you. I am looking at something I picked up uh, just by chance. I came across this thing in uh, some electronics uh, magazine. It, it's one of these <laughs> no-name kind of things that that uh, comes from China. Um, hey, and I'm I'm not against China. Um, especially when it comes for stuff that uh, I'd rather purchase and not make, really spend the time to make this kind of thing. I definitely could. Oh, and uh, let, me, so let me get to the point here. What, I'm, what I've got here is what the, the brand they call this is the Intelligent Mate MIDI Box. Okay, Intelligent Mate MIDI Box. What it is, is a USB MIDI interface. And so the MIDI interface here has a MIDI uh, through and a merge. Um, and essentially, that would be a split for people who are not really familiar necessarily with MIDI lingo. Um, and it's got four inputs and four outputs, right? So pretty cool. Uh, that means that um, you, you've got some pretty flexible hooking up ways of doing MIDI with this one little box. And now th this, this thing, I think it, I think it ran, uh, it was like 45 bucks. It took a while to get here. It took like two weeks or so. Um, ooh, it's kind of dirty. Uh, finger finish. I should have washed my hands. It's black. Um, but uh, it's, uh, came all the way from China. Now, <laughs> uh, I have played with this and hooked it up many different ways already. Uh, so you don't have to. Um, and um, I have hooked this up with USB to a Mac, and it ran just fine. Essentially, I, it has a USB connector in the back, regular USB, that's a type B, right? Um, hooked it up right into uh, my Mac laptop, and I, I'm pretty darn sure it would work with Linux without any problem, I'm guessing. Uh, I haven't tested that, so... Uh, but I figure there's probably not any reason why not. It, it, is a, it is a mini box, and like I said when I first started, um, really, if I had some more time on my hands, I, I would just make this um, because it's not all that difficult. In any case, uh, it has three, no, four, four, maybe five different modes, and I'll go over them after I just plug it in. Uh, uh, by the way, you know, I, I didn't mention this, uh, I've hooked it up to my iPad, and it works just fine as well. Uh, and that, that opens up all kinds of opportunities and different ways of doing stuff, huh? Uh, as a matter of fact, I have, um, with a powered USB hub, I have connected... Uh, an Art Arturia beat step, okay, uh, through the USB hub and into my iPad. This connected to the USB hub and into the iPad. And having one of these outputs, okay, running into um, a MeBlip anode synthesizer. If you, you've probably, or if you haven't seen that video, you should check it out. Uh, it is a very, very cool in, uh, synthesizer that I believe you can even get now for less than 150 bucks. I mean, how's that? And it is, it's a kick-ass little synthesizer. In any case, I've had this thing hooked up to the iPad with a beat step, running through this with the iPad, um, using, uh, and I'm not, I could, I could use a beat step to sequence the, the, the meat blip as I did in that one video, but I wasn't doing that. I was actually using um, a, 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 a software synth that was actually on the iPad and actually controlling the meat blip through this out to it. So I was using uh, my iPad as a controller keyboard, essentially running out to a physical device. So that's one of the things you could do with it. Uh, what I use it for mostly is hooking up a whole lot of uh, those tabletop synthesizers. Out, um, um, and there's different ways to do that, which I am definitely not going to get into because MIDI can get really complicated really quick uh, as far as routing signals. But uh, with four inputs and outputs, you can do some interesting stuff. Um, let me see. I've got uh, off the top of my head, uh, you, you know, Here's a Korg, Korg Volca keys, here's, you know, here's a Korg Volca bass, and here's a Meebla Panode, and here's a, an Arturia Mini Brute, you know. And you don't even have to hook it up coming out one by one, because that would be, you know, 
port one, channel one, port two, channel one, port three, channel one. I mean, you can hook it all coming out of A and, and hook it up in, in different ways, which I'm going to show you right now. Okay, so oops, sorry about that. Uh, bumping the camera. So I am just going to plug in the USB. I'm not plugging into a computer. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just powering it on because uh, if you don't want to use it with a computer, hey, get this. Then it just works as a regular old standalone MIDI, you know, box, <laughs> an interface. So perfect for tabletop stuff because I you don't have to hook it up to a computer. I, this USB cable right now is just hooked into a power block, you know, the kind of use for your phone. And, um, and it will work just fine. So in, in, th in this case, you know, what I would do is I would take, for example, just any old um, um, controller keyboard or interface of your choice that has uh, a five pin DIN like this, you know, and run it off out of there. Um, I've got a couple keyboards that will do that. Run it into here and then run that out to... Hey, run it out to your cold cord vocal keys, and now you're playing a keyboard and controlling that just through this box instead of touching it. Or, hey, and, and leave it up to your imagination. There's all kinds of stuff. So by pushing the button on the front, look, there's different configurations. So I'm going to start with number, I think that's, okay. I'm just pushing the button, and it's cycling through. So I'm going to get, okay, all four lights on. The... The bottom rows of, of lights, the, the orangey yellowish ones here, that's the ends, all right? So right now it's acting as a straight pass-through. So in, in this instance, I could have, you know, four synthesizers, right? Uh, and it doesn't have to be tabletop. I mean, you could be using this in any studio. I mean, you, this is handy stuff for this size. Uh, you could have four, four controller keyboards if you want, you know, and uh, controlling four different synthesizers right and it would be a one-to-one -one ratio you know like this you know controller keyboard a would be controlling key you know synthesizer a and keyboard b you would be controlling you know okay get what i'm saying four and four um most people wouldn't want to do it that way i don't think so you go to the next mode which means that everything going into uh one port for a now um broadcasts out uh, the four outs, okay? So now you have one controller keyboard and it's actually, it's, it's acting as, uh, it's, it's splitting that signal and um, acting as a through, okay? And sending that signal through to four different synthesizers. So now, now if you're playing that way, I'm playing a synthesizer controller keyboard here and I'm like, boom, here's like four synths that are playing all in unison at one time, rah, rah, you know, um, all Howard Jones style, right? Making all kinds of fun stuff going on. Uh, and if that doesn't work for you, um, uh, what's kind of cool is you can you can uh, have two controller keyboards, okay? So I, what I did is I changed this from A to B by pushing the button again. So now pretend on input A I have, you know, one synthesizer and it's controlling other stuff or one controller keyboard, right? And it's controlling four different synthesizers in this instance. And then I have another one over here that I don't want to use at the same time, but it has a different settings and, uh, and I want to use that or, you know, I'm doing my live setup and I sometimes I have play with my left hand and sometimes I'm over here and I need to play with my right hand and I just want to play with that synthesizer for this song, whatever. And I just push the button and go, okay, now I'm using that one, right? Uh, or I'm using the third one, same thing. It's up to four. I could have four different controller keyboards in my setup and, and controlling different things and splitting stuff out. Or uh, you've got this mode. Now this is a merge, okay? So now what we've got going on is I have two, I have input A and input B. So if I had a controller keyboard here and a controller keyboard here, it's merging the MIDI signals together and sending it out. So now I can play the same part uh, on this part, keyboard, or this part at the same time. They're both live, okay? I don't know really why I'm going into all this with you, <laughs> uh, but hey, why not? Um, um, uh, MIDI's a complicated thing if you're not used to it. It's, it's really not complicated. It's one of the, one of the more simple things, um, but, you know, you really should know it and uh, um, figure out how it works. Um, I think you, one of the things that trips, up, I'll just tell you this, one of the things that trips people up quite a bit is, you know, when you have USB over MIDI, which a lot of people are used to now, and when they say MIDI, um, 
Uh, it's a different type of of connection. Um, with MIDI cables, uh, there's you have to um, have two cables essentially for what one MIDI one USB cable we could handle. And USB cables can actually handle multiple channels and ports at the same time. But with, you know, just a regular run of, run of mill 5 DIN uh, cable, you have, uh, it's one directional, you know, it's not two directional like, you know, these cables uh, with a with a MIDI cable. I don't, I don't see one I have handy here. So you, you just have to imagine with me. Uh, they go one direction. So you have definitely an in right? And then you have an out um, for the cable. And that's what confuses people is one end of the cable is the in and this, and then it goes in the cable, right? And the signal goes through the cable and then it goes out the cable, you know, like a garden hose goes in this side and it goes out that side. And we're so, we've gotten so used to USB that, you know, that it goes back and forth and we go like, oh, there is no in and out. They both are, both are in and out. Well, you, uh, five DIN MIDI cables, that's why you have to have two because you hook up one coming from the out of your synthesizer, and when it comes out of the synthesizer, right, it goes into the cable <laughs> on the inside. It goes into the cable, goes down the hose of the cable, and it comes out the cable. So um, though that, that the kind of terminology that goes along with MIDI confuses a lot of people sometimes if you're not used to it. But um, that is about all I've got to say about the Intelligent Mate MIDI box. Other than I really, seriously, I did a lot of looking around because I needed um, a MIDI splitter, a MIDI splitter like this uh, for some um, some stuff I was doing, and I could not find uh, one cheap at all. Uh, not boy, I'm just going to correct myself every video, aren't I, with that word cheap? Uh, an inexpensive one. Um, that gets the job done. And this thing has been, hey, I've, I've dropped it on the floor already a couple times, and it's it's pretty rugged. It's a metal, like, electronics project case. Um, not plastic at all. Uh, the only thing that comes close, uh, and this just wasn't working for me, is I have this, you know, this PreSonus uh, AudioBox i2 um, interface, audio interface, and it does actually... Let's see if it's not hooked up anything, and I'll just show you real quick. Um, and it does have, you know, MIDI ins and outs. It has one in the back. But, you know, this this thing costs like 150 bucks, And then that's fine. 150 bucks is good for, you know, a good audio interface that has, you know, a MIDI in and out. So when you hook it up to a computer, uh, you can use it as a MIDI interface. But, hey, uh, I don't want to hook everything up to my computer all the time. And that was the, and the entire point. It's like I need something that I can split off MIDI signals and not hook it up to any computer. And that's where this came in. So I am not exactly sure where I found it at this moment because I cannot find the receipt at the moment. But when I do, and by the time I, I put this video out, I will put um, the store that I bought it from and uh, the price that I purchased it for. Um, so you can take a look at it yourself and see if it's something you might need. Um, because believe me, uh, you will need it eventually if you keep on hooking these synthesizers um, together the way that you want them to do and also have the flexibility to hook them up in multiple different ways. And that's, to me, heck, that's, that's, that's uh, a good 80 to 90% of the fun is hooking it up in different ways. Um, so there you go. The intelligent MIDI box. The intelligent mate MIDI box. Uh, Good show. Definitely worth your money. All right. That's that. Uh, this is MetaMicro again, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Please hang up and try again.